All right. Good to be here this morning, isn't it? Um, of course, we're in the week of Thanksgiving. I can't believe that we're here. This year has just flown by, and um, but I'm I'm very happy. Um, I'm going to start my message this morning from Psalms 107. I'm going to start with verse 1. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How many of you in here has been redeemed this morning? So if you've been redeemed, it's our job to say so, right? So what we are going to do this morning, if if you'll go back to uh, verse 1, there, Brother Buzz, it says in there, it says, He is good. So I'm going to count to three, and then we're all going to say He is good. If you've been redeemed, if you haven't been redeemed, then we're going to have an altar call here later, and you can be redeemed. I'm being serious. All right, so on three. One, two, three. He is good. Amen. Doesn't that feel good? He is good. He is good because He is God. Amen. It says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. How many of y'all felt like before you were deemed that you were in the wilderness? That you were in a place that you didn't know how you were going to get out? You were desolate. That's what he's talking about here. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distress. If that's not enough to shout about right there, if you feel that in your heart, if that's happened in your life, that should be enough to praise Him right there. And He led them forth by the right way, that they might, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Notice that they couldn't find the city on their own. They couldn't quench their thirst. They couldn't satisfy their hunger. They couldn't find their way out of the wilderness on their own. It took God's help, didn't it? And I'm telling you, you may feel like you're in a wilderness right now. Just cry out to God. He'll lead you in the right way. He'll lead you to where you need to be. He'll guide you. Let Him be your God. It says He led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. A place where they could dwell. A place where they, where they could you know, get their strength back. A place where they could flourish. It says right here in verse 8, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. For He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. How many of us are longing after Him this morning? How many of us are hungry after Him this morning? I know I started the service with that, and it's all because my message is just coming through me. That's all it is. And, man, I long for Him. I long for Him in, in my life, in my family's life, in this church, in our community. I'd love to see our whole nation turn around and turn back to God. Reba McIntyre thinks so. You know, she wants to stand up and say it in whatever it was, the CMA Awards, and everybody's like, you know, man, you know, that's a good idea. You know, she, Reba hit the nail on the head. She isn't the first one to say it. And she isn't the first one to feel like that either. And it's going to take every single one of us. And that's why she said when this nation turns back to God, that's when we can be great again. It doesn't matter if just one person turns to God. It's going to take all of us. 
But what I want to focus on this morning, I want us to take a look back at verse number 8, if that could be put on the screen. And I want us to notice that the, the psalmist David, he says, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. Now, I'll be honest with you. The first thing I think about when I read this verse is a song that, that we, uh, we sing, and it's called Rejoice, Re Rejoice in the Lord Always. And in the bridge, it's got this verse in it, and it's always felt kind of weird. Because we had to, like, the men, we had to hit this deep part. Oh, that men would praise him. Anybody remember that song? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, exactly. But when I read that verse, that's what popped in my head was that song, you know, singing, singing that song and, and how awkward it was to, to be singing that in such a, a low-pitched voice. And I'm glad that, that I can just read it and not have to sing it this morning like that. But what stuck out to me when I read that verse during my studying is that the word would, the word would stood out to me. You know, a thankful attitude is a choice that you make. It's a choice that I make. It's a choice that all of us make. It's a decision to say, you know what? God, I'm going to give you thanks no matter what the circumstance or the situation. You know, you choose your attitude just like you choose the clothes that you put on or the food that you eat. Those are choices that you make. When you go down there to eat today, there might be something you look at and you say, oh, don't want none of that. And this is why we don't put names in front of the pot. In the... <laughs> because everybody, everybody loves the, the church drama. You know, you, you come up and you go up to somebody, you know, who, who made this stuff? And, and somebody's like, I did. Oh, it was great. You, you get ready to dog out that stuff, and then all of a sudden, it just turns great. But you know what? You choose. You choose. You choose what attitude you have. You choose, choose what choices you make. You choose the response you've got to the person that made the stuffing. You choose whether to keep your mouth shut or keep it, you know, running. It's your choice. God gave us free will. Sometimes it doesn't play in our favor. A lot of times it doesn't play in our favor. I say stuff all the time that I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. All the time. But you know what? I also know that God has given us that conscience. He's given us in the back of our head that, you know, when we do things or we say things that we know that we shouldn't, you know, He lets us know. He corrects us real quick. The day that he stops correcting me is, you know, the day I'm going to be completely lost. But we choose these things. And, you know, those are the, the things that you wake up and that you choose every day, you know, what to put on or, or you know, what to eat. So what, I'm, what I want to ask you is, what kind of attitude are you waking up with? What kind of attitude do you have right now? You may have a great attitude. You may have a really, really bad attitude. You may be sitting back in there fuming right now, and I have no idea. You might be. But since we're talking about David, I'm going to go to Psalms 5 and 3, and I'm going to let you hear what David thinks about it. In Psalms 5 and 3, it says, My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning, I will direct it to you, and I will look up. He's going ahead, and he's making a choice right there that he says, you know what, Lord? You're going to hear my voice in the morning. You're going to hear me singing your praises. You know, and we all know this, 
there, there's plenty of things to gripe and complain and, and worry about. But, you know, there's also plenty of things to be grateful for, too. Amen. The attitude of gratitude. Don't y'all love stuff that rhymes? I do. Attitude of gratitude. I love that. And the reason I love it is because it helps me remember it. That we need that attitude. You know, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not just a day or a season. Thanksgiving is an attitude or a spirit that lives within you. You choose whether or not to walk around defeated, beaten, or depressed. Or, you know, you can wake up every morning and you can thank God for another day. Another day to live. Another day to be with your family and your friends. Another day to give praise to the one who has been there with you the whole time and seen you through so many trials. We get that opportunity when we wake up every morning. And you know what? I don't want to ever fail to wake up one morning and show God the thanksgiving that I have in my heart towards Him. Because, you know, He's never left you through every mistake in your in, in failure. He's never left you. He's never stopped loving you. His power hasn't decreased. He's the same God that David was singing praise to right here in Psalms. He's that same God. He's the same God that was with him when he fought the bear and he fought the lion. Same God that helped him defeat Goliath and the same God that appointed him to be king. You know, he, David, David praised God regardless of whether he was in the pasture or whether he was in the palace. He did. And some of you might feel like, you know, you're in the pasture and that you're stuck there. And you want to make a move in your life. Begin to praise Him. Just praise Him. It doesn't matter what the circumstance or the situation. Just have that thanksgiving in your heart. You know, David talks about a uh, spirit of excellence as well. That, that everything that he did, he wanted to do with that spirit of excellence. And that's something that I think we should all aspire to. As I said Wednesday night, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be perfect. But that doesn't mean that I shouldn't be striving to be the most perfect person that I can be. That doesn't mean that, you know, when you, you mess up and you sin, that you just give up and say, well, I've sinned. I'm just going to live in it now. Don't sit there and lay in sin. Don't live in it. Pull yourself out of it and praise God. Just praise Him. Give Him, give him the thanks that He deserves. You know, God, just like I said in, when you get to thinking about it with David, you know, He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. He's going to be the same. The only thing that changes is us. You know, we change. Our choices change. Our, our desires change. Our passions change. Sometimes you can get burnt out on stuff. You can. But that's why God talks about that fresh anointing that we need in our life. That's why you have to empty yourself every now and then so you can be refilled. Because if you just let something sit in a cup, it'll get stagnant. I talked about Wednesday night about, you know, the sweet tea and how you pour sugar in it. And if you didn't stir it up, then it would just sit there on top and it wouldn't do anything. But also, you know, once you stir it up, if you let it sit there, all that sugar is going to sink to the bottom and you're going to need a stirring again. We need a stirring in this place. We need a stirring in our souls and in our spirits. So you may ask, how can Thanksgiving, how can it be a spirit or an attitude? Well, 1 Thessalonians verse 5, 16 through 19, 
it says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And then number 19, verse 19 is very important. Do not quench the Spirit. Don't quench the Spirit. You know, when we don't give God thanks, when we don't give Him praise, that's quenching the Spirit. You know, if, if we're walking around and we've got this bad attitude all the time and, you know, nobody feels like they can approach us, you know, everybody looks at you and you think, you know, they're just mad all the time. They're just grumpy. I was watching Snow White with Ellis yesterday and he got into grumpy and I was just like, good Lord, I work with some of those people. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we got a couple of dopies too. But all those, you know, you get to thinking about it, you know, those seven dwarves and things, you know, all those are, you know, character traits. You know, they are. And, you know, I get to thinking about, you know, where do I fall in line? You know, am I, am I grumpy or am I happy? You know, happy. When she asked, when she asked happy, she went to ask happy what, what his name was. She couldn't even get it out of her mouth. He said, I'm happy. He did. Go back and watch Snow White. It's on Disney+. Plus. He couldn't wait to get it out. He couldn't wait to tell her who he was and how he felt. We should be excited about God like that. We should have that spirit of happiness, that spirit of thanksgiving in us, and it's just ready to pop out of us. You know, you can sit back there on the pew and and you can take, you know, what I'm saying and and you can say, well, you know, he doesn't know what I'm going through. He doesn't know where I've been. He doesn't know what I'm facing next week. And you're right. I don't know. And I don't need to know. But I will tell you this. There is one who does know. He knows every bit of it. And if you can take it to Him, then He can do something about it. He can erase that past. He can take what you're going through right now and He can bring change. But don't, in the middle of it, don't stop giving Him thanks because you'll quench that spirit and you might not make it out. And everything give thanks. That means everything we do. Everything. It says pray without ceasing. A lot of people when they when they hear pray without ceasing, you know, they may think, well, you know, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. We need to keep praying. Prayer's not about just going to God and, and telling Him what we need all the time. You know, you got to go to God and thanks. In fact, it says that in Psalms, David says that that's the first thing we should do when we pray is give him thanks. Go ahead and let him know that you're thankful for what he's already done. It works with my dad. Parents in the house, when your kid, when they're acting all good and they're telling you thank you for all this stuff and, you know, when they're kind of being a little too happy and stuff. Have you ever looked at one of them and said, all right, what do you want? It's happened before. Stafford will, Stafford will come up to me and, 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 you know, she'll have just been so mean earlier and stuff with me. And, and she'll come up and she'll come up to me on the couch and she'll just kind of pat me and just in a sweet voice, Daddy. Can I have some more TV? I can't say no to that. Casey doesn't like it, but they've got my heart. They've got my heart. And I want you to know this morning that you've got God's heart. 
You've got it. But let me ask you this. Does he have yours? Does he have yours in return? That's the question. That's what I ask myself every day. Is my heart right? And if it's not right, then I need to get it right. Come to him in thanks. And then that's when he'll start to take care of the things. He'll take care of stuff you didn't even ask him for. I mean, he, there, there's no limitations on God. Like I said, plenty of times, the only limitations we put on God are the ones that we put on him. That's it. So I want you to know that thinking and thanking, they go hand in hand. They do. I want us to think this morning, and somebody raise their hand if they want to answer you know, this question. Who did I give a pencil to this morning? No, not don't raise your hands. Who did I give a pencil to this morning? Is it, can anybody remember? Huh? Did you got one? Rocky got one? Yeah, good. Who else got one? Good job. Y'all passed the test this morning. Good job. Because normally, people would have pointed out that Dylan got a pencil first. Because I broke Dylan's. And so many times, our thinking is focused on the negative. It is. I gave out a bunch of pencils this morning. But a lot of times, our focus goes right towards the, the problem, the negative. And that's all that stands out. There's one thing I wanted to do this morning, and I didn't do it just because, you know, I might have got kicked out. I wanted to put a bag of trash right there in the foyer because I know a bunch of people would have come in. Who put this trash there? That's all that would have stood out is just the trash. Nothing else, just right there at the front door, the trash. Nobody else would have saw everything else in this building. They wouldn't have saw how nice the fellowship hall looks. They wouldn't have saw all the amazing food. When they come through the door, what they would have saw was the trash. And that's our thinking. That's how our mind works sometimes. Is it all we want to focus on, that on is the negative. But if our thinking and our thinking go hand in hand, then guess what we need? We need a mind change. So I want to go to Psalms 103, and I want to talk about three ways that we can think to give him thanks. So Psalms 103, start on verse 1, it says, and I'm sure these are all songs, by the way. These are songs that David wrote, and people have turned them into songs. I'm sure you all recognize this one. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So number one, we need to think about what God has given us. We need to think about that He's given us forgiveness. He's given us healing, protection. He's given us redemption. And He's given us love and compassion. We need to think about that. We don't need to forget those things. Then you jump down to verse 8. It says, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from, from us. So we also, we need to think about what God has not given us. 
that He's not given us punishment. That He's not given us what we deserve. Because there's been times that I feel like I didn't deserve His love. There's been times that if it had been me dealing with somebody else, that I might have given up on them. But I'm glad that God doesn't give up on me so easily. That's the God we serve. So we need to think about what He has not given us. And in Psalms 103, 15 through 18, it says, As for men, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. Life's quick, just like that. I know I talked about earlier how fast this year has flown by, and I feel like the years keep getting faster and faster. And we're not promised tomorrow. That's one thing I, I get to thinking about, you know, how my life's going to be when I'm, when I'm old. You know, when Stafford and Ellis are, you know, they're, they're off and they're, they're married and they're bringing grandkids and all this stuff. And I got to thinking about that when I was reading this verse and I said, you know what? I might not make it to that. I'm not promised tomorrow. I'm not. None of us are. But then, we get to verse 17. It says, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him, and His righteousness to children's children, to such as keep His covenant, and to those who remember His commandments to do them. So we've got to think about what God wants to give us. He wants to give us eternal life. He doesn't want this to be the greatest part. He wants your choices to lead to you receiving that promise that He's given us. He wants to look on us and say, well done. That's what He wants. And as I said, we're not, we're not promised one more day. We're not promised one more second. That's why we need to make sure that every moment, every moment that we get a chance, that we've got that spirit of thanksgiving inside of us. I wasn't planning on talking about this. And it just hit me that when I was up there with Bill and his family, the one thing they could talk about, and, and everybody, everybody knows that everybody's got struggles. They do. I'm not picking on anybody this morning. I hope you don't think that. But the one thing that they said when they were up there is how awesome the turnaround had been the last couple months. And that he had made peace with some of his family members that were up there. And they were all up there at the hospital with them. And one of them looked at me and they said, they said, I don't understand it. They said, they said he was doing so good. You know, everything was great. They said, why now? And I didn't answer them and tell them this. I tried to speak words of peace and I tried to be encouraging because I know that God can still heal him. But if this is his time, just think about the lasting memory that they'll have. They'll remember him for the man that he was these past two months. They won't remember the man from before. So if you've got something built up inside of you, if you've got some problems with family members or things like that, this life's too short to hold on to stuff like that. Just get it out. Love on people. Have that spirit of thanksgiving inside of you. Have that attitude that, you know what? I might not have been in the wrong, but I'm going to go tell them I'm sorry anyways. Be the bigger person. 
every day. And you know, that's what Thanksgiving was all about when it first started anyways. You know, you've got the pilgrims and the Indians that they're, they're there killing each other. And all of a sudden they came to peace and they came and they sat at one table and, and everybody brought, you know, their own little something and they came together as one. And that's why Thanksgiving is special. And that's why I, I, I love that spirit of Thanksgiving. Because I'll tell you this, and this is something that, that we try to practice in our family, and I'm sure that a lot of y'all do as well, is that if you know that somebody doesn't have somewhere to go on Thanksgiving, that you invite them into your home and you say, hey, come eat with us. Come have a meal with us. And you know what that is? That's God. That is God's love right there. That is love and compassion. But I ask, where is that the rest of the year? Where is it at? Are you reaching out for people that you know don't have anybody? Are you letting that spirit of thanksgiving reside in your heart at all times? Not just one day a year? Not just for one week or one little season? Are we walking up? Are we waking up with it? Are we walking around with it? Can people see it coming through us? If you'll stand with me this morning. I know that I know that we've got a lot of good stuff waiting on us back there. And I know that I'm the person that's standing between you and food. So I apologize. But you know what? I think that God's got something for us this morning as well. I think God's got something for you this morning if you want it, if you need it. And when I talked about the pilgrims and the Indians coming together, we should, our church should be like that. You know, we've got people from different backgrounds. We've got people from, you know, different denominations and all this stuff. Somebody, you know, asked me, they said, you know, what kind of church do you go to? I said, well, it's, you know, non-denominational. We got people from Baptist, people from Methodist, all kinds of different backgrounds. But you know what? It hasn't, it hasn't stopped us from coming together. It hasn't stopped us from being the family that we are. And you know, families, families stick together. Families pray together. Families hold somebody up when they've got something going on. So I'm asking you this morning that if you've got a need, if one of my family members in here has got a need, that you come up here and give it to God. But not just that. That if one of our family members comes up here to give something to God, if they've got something they're going through, then I want the rest of their family right behind them, praying for them. Because that is a true thanksgiving spirit, that we are there for one another. Regardless of what the circumstance, regardless of how you feel, you might have had a bad morning, I'm sorry. You might have woke up on the wrong side of the bed and you know you didn't give God praise like you you know, wish that you would have. But guess what? There's still a lot of day left. Even if you didn't wake up and give him the praise this morning, go ahead and start giving it to him right now. Don't wait too late. Don't wait too late in your life to start walking around with that spirit of thanksgiving. God wants to do something amazing in each and every one of our lives. He wants to do something through us that other people can see. And so we can encourage other ones. But it all starts with us.
It all starts with our choices. And I choose to be thankful this morning. I choose to praise Him. I choose to worship Him. Because in all the stuff in my life where there's uncertainty and where I don't know what's going to happen next week, He's the one constant. I know that He's always going to be there. I know that I'm never going to have to go looking for Him. That all i got to do is say His name. and There He is. So if you've got something going on this morning, I pray, just like Brother Michael said when he was reading this verse down here, don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. But let God encourage you. Let your family encourage you. Let us be there for one another. And not just here. Not just within these four walls but everywhere we go, just like God will be. It says wherever we go, that's where He'll be. And that's the way this family should be as well. That's the way your, your family should be on Thursday. Wherever you go, take God with you. Take His love. Take His compassion. If you feel led to come down to this altar this morning, if everybody would just close their eyes, I just, I feel this in my spirit.